Say it one more time. Lamarco. Lamarco. <clears throat> Wait. Yeah, that was dumb. Okay. How are my eyebrows? They don't, they're not around. Oh, they're, oh yeah, they're under the hat. They're underneath. Hey, this is Jason Rouse, and uh, welcome to another episode of the Safe Word Podcast. Uh, on the show today, a uh, special guest, Jake LaMarca, uh, of the comedy duo Jake and Louie. Uh, what came first, the Louie or the Jake? I mean, it kind of had to be Jake, didn't it? Like, the puppet doesn't choose a fucking guy to... That doesn't sound like a guy who's obsessed with... Because I know... I've seen... Look, I was fortunate enough, in I think in 2007, to work with a comedian that I'd heard rumors about numerous times. And there was very little information about him on the internet. Very dated clips and some old TV appearances... But when I did the uh, comedy festival in uh, 2007, on the show was Otto and George. And I'd never really been around ventriloquist acts uh, at all. And But I was extremely fascinated about all things Sesame Street. And puppets, ventriloquists, marionettes, all that kind of stuff. Really, I think it really started with Punch and Judy, to be honest with you. But hmm. I remember really distinctly Otto talking to his puppet in the suitcase like there was dialogue going back and forth and i'd never seen anybody talk to their uh toys yeah that's like a warm-up thing yeah is that what it is he would talk yeah he talks about he liked the idea that people thought he was crazy yeah and so he would fuck with people and like have a argument with george when he thought nobody was looking and yeah yeah that's a beautiful thing yeah i remember just in the green room he just kind of looked at the box and, and started like that fucking asshole I got to deal with him tonight. That's great. Um, what was your first experience uh, with ventriloquism? The first, that was that fucking Goosebumps. It's saying, thank you, Canada, because you guys made that Goosebumps series out Huge of the books. series, yeah. Yeah, and so Night of the Living Dummy. I was a weird kid. I collected skull. I would have loved your apartment as a kid. I collected skulls and skeletons yeah. and, of everything Yeah. and anything weird. And so when I saw that, I was like, I wanted the dummy because I wanted to read it the spell that would bring it to life that's in the Goosebumps book. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you're eight and you don't know better, I guess. Yeah. And so I begged my mom to get it for me, and it just came with a booklet on how to do it. It came, you bought a ventriloquist dummy with an instructional booklet. Oh, I should have, yeah, it, the one from the Goosebumps show. They make oh. one for kids where it has the string at the back of the neck, like yeah. the old Charlie McCarthy's. And yeah. I got that. Glow in the dark eyes. It was really creepy. And it was an actual hand operation like this? No, it's like it has a stuffed body and has yeah. a plastic head and a, and a string that comes out of the back of the neck. Yeah. And you got to like almost strangle it because the head doesn't stay up and you got to cr pull okay. the thing for everything. Yeah. So uh, from staring at you from the back, it looks like you're holding up a cha child and wringing its neck at the yeah. same time. You're fucking tightening a tourniquet. Like yeah. She, yeah, like it's uh, John Bonnet Ramsey. What is the worst part about being a ventriloquist act? <laughs> Having to have the fucking thing around. I wish I could just go anywhere it's and not I a could guitar, just do a though. set. 
At least with a suitcase, people think you're on your way to an adventure. Are people actually disappointed? Have you ever had anybody sour when you've opened the uh, tickle trunk over there and pulled the... Uh, Most. Yeah. Before they realize that the puppet's racist and that it's a dirty act and that it's fun, it's it's nobody wants to see a puppet. I don't like seeing puppets. <laughs> I don't like ventriloquism or comedy. No, I know, I know. I've noticed, I've noticed. But that's what we'll probably what, what we, that see you right to the bitter end. But... Um, yeah, it's a weird gig. You're kind of like a tambourine player yeah. in a band. Yeah, why is it there? Yeah, and any comedy club lineup, you just have six guys and a couple girls, and then just Jake and Louie, and people are like, "What is? What's this?" Well, yeah, I think you kind of su- like it, it is literally, and with all due respect, it's pussy repellent. Yeah. Well, it, it sifts. It helps you sift through the garbage. Because yeah. if they don't like the puppet, they won't like the mustache. Yeah. They don't like the World War II obsession. They won't like the Pokemon. It's yeah. like a domino effect. Yeah. If they can get past the puppet, then that's good. <sighs> the gr- there, the it, girl I'm dating now, I the first time I uh, met her, I, I was at the bottom of an open mic on a <laughs> rooftop at a hostel in Brooklyn. Yeah. It was shit. One of the lights went out, and I was just angry. And she mentioned proletariat in her set. And fucking, she's Asian, so Louis fucking points his face to her and goes, Oh, look at it, it's fucking Chairman Mao's daughter over here. <laughs> but yeah, she fucking loved it, and now yeah. she's, you know. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. If you're doing anything that's very outside the box and against the green, especially with your uh, uh, type of comedy, um, I can't, I don't know if we discussed this. You've been on the show once before, I think. Yeah, I think and, I was hammered. And you were probably hammered. Oh, yeah. Um, I was back in LA, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I remember you put you on the Mandalorian, up. yeah. You blew up. Your face. Yeah, my face, my fucking tits. You look like Magic Johnson. For it was about... It was bad. Yeah, I gained at least... I think it was 150, and then I got to 220 eventually. That's crazy. Just drink... 220. A bottle of vodka a day, plus multiple beers surrounding it, and then... Uber Eats constantly going into debt burgers delivered to me. Yeah. So what what, what was your day? You get up at what? 12.30 no, in the afternoon? No, 6. 6 in the morning? You're up at 5. Yeah, because you I black out at around 11 or 12. Yeah. Instantly wake up at 5. Fucking throw up and just grocery stores open in 15 minutes. Yeah. I think I got enough. I got 75 cents and I got like so I got four bucks. Let me fucking steal a dollar from my mom. And just go and drink and repeat it for. A Did good you have two roommates years. who was observing all this? Uh, my mom, your mother, because she had moved out to L.A. because she'd retired, and I was already out there. And she's like, "Oh, let's all move out there." And she yeah. let me live with her. Thank Christ, because I would have been fucking. Did she ever open your bedroom door and say you're a piss tank? No, nah, I mean, what do you? Yeah. What can you do? It was really just. It was just depressing for her, probably. It was probably yeah. horrible, but you just, you just out of it. You just were you lying and sneaking around drinking? Because a lot of alcoholics would put like garlic in their mouth, or there was no high. I no. I am not a sneak drinker. It's it's a secret up until four days. Yeah. If I started drinking, everybody knows in four days. Yeah, yeah. You t- anytime I've seen you ingest alcohol or marijuana, it's it really cuts you in half. You're you're n- not barely present. Yeah, it's a good disassociating thing, yeah. Uh, any bed pissing? Not bed pissing. Uh, pissed a lot of other places, though. I pissed... Uh, I remember waking up to my mom screaming because I was pissing into a potted plant that was next to her head yeah. as she was laying down. Uh, I got <laughs> I got kicked out of a place in New Jersey. I lived in Jersey for six months. Yeah. I uh, was still drinking. I was in rehab for four of those months. And the last straw, to a guy who's very nice and I'm still friends with him, I made a wrong turn in the middle of the night and I pissed in his room yeah. on his mail instead of the bathroom. Yeah. I've uh, I've seen friends of mine who've pissed in laundry hampers. Oh, but just open up the drawer in a dresser and then pissed in the dresser. Oh, yeah. In my closet once. And when in L.A., one of my places, I had a coffee cup on the floor in my closet. I guess blacked out. I opened it up and I saw the porcelain and my brain put in put toilet together. Yeah. And there was that. Oh, and... uh. One more. Oh, yeah, piss jugs. That was a big thing. On Compound <laughs> Classic Media. Classic alcoholic move. Yeah. On piss Compound bottles. Media, they know all about the piss jugs. Rich Carucci, who's a wonderful comedian in Jersey, he used to be friends with Otto. He used to drive him around. And uh, he cleaned my room for me once when I went to uh, to rehab. He's the, <laughs> he's the sweetest, nicest That's man ever. That's a nice ever. guy. And he threw out four full gallon piss jugs. Yeah. Yeah. And with zero caps on any of them. It's oh, just yeah. hot. 
piss jugs. Yeah, it looked like a, a, a mold, warehouse full of lava lamps. Mold specks floating on the top, mm. yeah. Yeah, well, you know, you things folded up in Los Angeles. What, what time? When did you get out of L.A.? Because I think you'd already moved back. I think September. You moved. You left before I did, and I was like, fuck, this is bad. Yeah. And when, yeah so September, I think it was. I made a note to myself that the 7-Eleven at Hollywood Highland, the Sri Lankan family that ran that place, uh, as soon as they put boards on the windows, I'm like, it's over. Yeah. Because that was kind of like my food line. I was eating out of 7-Eleven for like a couple months because there was nothing out. That's healthy. Yeah. Well, I didn't have a choice. And trying to find a healthy snack in a 7-Eleven is uh, very difficult. Yeah. You, you don't some... seem to have a problem. You love 7-Eleven. Well, yeah. But I'm not looking for a healthy snack. It's like, oh, do I want these grapes covered in sausage grease? Yeah. It's all fucking their, their donuts. They've been treating me very well. I uh, know. Hey, their coffee's not bad either. But yeah. I, I'd seen a family come in there and buy a full family dinner out of the hot wagon. That's Pizza, just... chicken wings, those sausage roll. Go get a fucking chicken yeah. breast, you rotten whore. And the kids are crying. They're all cranky because they haven't slept because they've been all jacked up on sugar and caffeine. It's a sad no, state of wild. affairs. Um, but yeah, LA, fucking, I'm glad I'm out. I, I'm glad. Cause yeah, I me was, too. I, I, two years in, I wanted to leave. I was like, this was a mistake. I should have went to New York. But then COVID and alcoholism was my excuse. Yeah, you got zero recognition in LA. I also wasn't really trying. Yeah, but you were out active, and the alcohol lasted, what, a, less than a year? Uh, it, it was ramping up. Yeah. It took a year to really ramp up, and it was starting to fuck. It was, you know, I was, wasn't showing up to things. and. Have you ever performed at the improv? Yes. Okay, Laugh Factory. Once, yeah. And the Comedy Store. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, well, that that's something. Yeah, I, but yeah, I, it, w- it would have been better because you know I moved out there when I was like seventeen. I didn't. It was college for me, you know. Drinking, there's lots yeah. of weed. I wasn't writing properly. Yeah, you know, you get hammered and you go on stage. Ventriloquism that just doesn't work. You no, you're not Ron White. It's that first two years because I remember distinctly like okay, growing pains the first year, second year maybe I should see some sun on the horizon there. Nothing. It just. It would be like months of doom. Yeah. And then something would blip to keep you in the game. It was weird. I never got booked. Yeah, I got booked like well, maybe once a month. Yeah. And now in New York, I do and four you, shows a and week. And you've been trying to get that once a month spot. You've taken you eight months yeah. back and forth coordinating with this. And, but then Jamie quits the improv and starts his own thing. And it's like, oh, well, I know I got to start over. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's the other downside is you could be away for a couple of weeks and come back and the whole regime has changed. Now you're reintroducing yourself to a, a booking agent that, at a club that you've been performing at for years. Yeah. And, and back then it was difficult because they knew I wasn't that good. And I, and I know now I wasn't that good. Yeah, but you had an act. Yeah. But yeah, the level yeah. of like like Dynasty typewriter, who the guy uh, Jamie who booked the yeah. improv, he has that Flam. Yeah, he's a wonderful guy. Yeah, and he liked me, and he liked what I did, and he had me yeah. book me on some things. But I knew, you know, Sarah Silverman and like Mark Maron go on lineups there. Yeah, I could pr- probably pull. I could pull that out now with 15 minutes. I could pull that out back then. Most definitely, you could pull it out now. Back then. I think it would be in your favor, but you know it would have been devastating if it if it had floundered. Oh yeah. It would have struggled. And yeah. I, can't, I wouldn't have been able to handle that well back and then. They would have cut you out of the club for a year. Yeah. It sucks. And I would have gotten drunk afterwards and probably made a scene. Made a pass at the bartender. Ugh. <laughs> and Jamie's family goes to that place. Like, he, like his family, they watch shows and they support. Yeah. It's a great family. All that would have had to happen is me to have been an asshole. Uh-huh. Just fucking 19 getting hammered. Just, I'm so lucky that nothing horrible happened. I've avoided going to jail a couple times. Yeah. I, I, I've been arrested drunk a couple of times. And uh, in fact, that's part of the reason I quit drinking is the police picked me up in the Four Seasons because I pissed all over the lobby and they were in, I was in handcuffs and the uh, they were taking me to jail. Unfortunately, the DJ that was on the show with me uh, confronted the police officers and asked them not to take this guy. He's performing tomorrow. And with Russell Peters. <laughs> mm. And they were fans, so they let me go. They dropped the magic name. And I woke up, just a bump on my head, my clothes were all ripped up, and I'm like, this is, uh, I'm going to lose my green card, <laughs> you know. But I am going to apply for citizenship probably this year. So America, you're stuck with me. 
deal with it. You couldn't afford to leave anyway. He was, you love it here. You love I it here. I do love it here. I totally love it here. You Wait, hate do the... you mean in the U.S.? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Of course. I, it's that freedom of speech. Yeah. That's really it. The rest of the stuff is, you know, if you don't like the neighborhood you're in or the city, you can move to a bunch of different other places. If anybody in Canada is getting arrested for a tweet, it's going to be you. So you I know, tweet you know. for that reason. Oh, yeah. I had uh, friends of mine who'd gotten big jobs over the years uh, were uh, asked to give over their passwords to their social media so that the company could comb through their entire history and find out if any of the tweets or posts would be a conflict of the company. That's why I can't get a job. <laughs> yeah, but you, have not, you haven't done anything illegal. It's, it's, it's clearly... Uh, a flavor of comedy, you know, it's an acquired taste. Yeah, it's a flavor like vomit, you know, <laughs> bile. Yeah, um, stings. It stings in the back of your throat with a little chunk in there. Tell us uh, about the um, the family that uh, you had performed at their uh, was it a birthday party? Oh, God, Christmas. Was it a Christmas? Oh yeah, the day Jake and Louie ruined Christmas. Yeah, I was fucking Christ at that point, maybe a year and a half in. And I had 20 loose minutes that wasn't all that great. You know, it was half it was fine, half it yeah. wasn't. And I, I was on Gig Salad. And it was the second thing. The first thing I booked on there was some a dude's 18-year-old birth. No, 21-year-old no, birthday party. Yeah. His mom was putting on for him in the basement before he went out with his friends. Set 21? Up the, I thought they were way younger. No, no, no. This is, this is a different thing. The, the first thing I did, this is the contrast. The first gig I did for Gig Salad, which is a, is a website people go on if you want to book things. <laughs> Mom, hey, my son's twenty one year birth for twenty first birthday. I want to do a Vegas theme. All his family's gonna be there before he goes out and parties with his friends. And I want to get you. And I'm like, ugh. But it was good money. And yeah. I went and I crushed. People loved it. Oh, it was great. amazing. But this one, this what, lady, was it? What was the setting? Was it in a backyard on a, a riser? Or a finished like stage? A, a finished basement, like an upstairs, yeah. like with a, like a bar over here and like yeah. an area, like a sli sorry, sliding glass doors. Yeah. yeah. And there was one kid there, and they had to take him out a minute in. But yeah, the, everybody loved it, and I was like, this is great. Yeah. I can I can I can function in this environment. If I get these nickel and dime gigs around, I might accumulate. This this looks like, like everything's gonna be fine, right? That was three hundred. It was three hundred bucks, yeah. and I did twenty minutes. Yeah, and it was like, yeah, this is. And I was seventeen. It was great. And then cut to a couple months later in December. Hey, I'm having an all adult Christmas party at this this place, and it was like yeah. ten minutes from me. And it's like I love raunchy humor, and I really go for it. And I'm like, yeah. beautiful. We get all the money. I get there. I have my sound system. Within four jokes. What's the room look like? Okay, it's like a banquet room. Uh, it's kind of small, a big long table, really awkward setup, a long table yeah. with chairs all around it, and then me here. And they're all looking at me, and I start it, and within four jokes, I think I did two kid fucking jokes <laughs> uh, within the first five, and they. <laughs> they instantly hated all, everything that I was doing. Because somebody was guilty of that at the dinner table. You think so? Yeah, everyone had that. The uncle happened to be there that finger fucked everybody. <laughs> and that's why they're all like, ooh. Because the, there's they're probably somebody's guilty of. Then I probably shouldn't have done a so many. I was a lot <laughs> back. I do a good amount now, but it was a lot back then. And it went from the dirty uncle was probably like, "Did I lose my phone? Like, yeah. How does it, what does this guy got all my? Is this an intervention? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that why you guys brought me here? <laughs> but yeah, in fucking within five minutes, just nobody they're yeah. not paying attention. And halfway through, their dinners come out. They get served to them, and. They just turn her back. All the people who are looking at me turn their backs. They start eating. Yeah. All I'm hearing as I'm telling my jokes is... Yep. And then every now and then... Yeah. To anything I say. Couldn't you be, had the foresight to request that you perform after dinner or before dinner? After a couple drinks? No, because usually it's not a problem. Usually... I do B and C rooms. Usually eating a, you know, a chicken finger on a plate no. with the audience is not a horrible thing. I refuse. I, it wasn't the food. It wasn't the food. I'm rooting Jason. for you in this story, but I appreciate your honesty. It wasn't the food. It, it was wasn't me. The food. <laughs> it was this dumb lady. For, I like raunchy humor thinking I'm going to do some double entendres. Yeah, like, but you should have known. Again, it's not like you hiding yourself from the internet. With a simple Google search at the basic level... They can click on photos and video clips and, and within seconds get a quick, 
there's no like you are not endearing the audience in the beginning at, at all so but you yeah uh, it's a weird thing it she was a bad better yeah. yeah it was a bad book she should i mean i guess raunchy is different i don't like the difference in what me what, what is clean and then family friendly they and then tv you do clean. a couple sex jokes a little cheeky it's like, sex no. jokes yeah no guys but uh, but also to be fair they hire a 16 year old with a puppet you can't imagine no. that he's going to pull out any of the no. things that I did. Yeah, No, it's uh, it's great. My it's... opener back then is still my opener now. Oh, is I it? I hate to say, yeah. Oh, this is a nice place. Yeah, you got nice bathrooms here. I usually hate public bathrooms. Why, are you a germaphobe? No, it's because I'm so short. You'd be shocked at how crowded those glory holes get when they think there's a kid in there. I've told uh, the, the back end of that joke as a, when I remembered, yeah. Um, and there's something horribly disturbing about that. I like the I like the visual of a crowded glory hall, like all the cocks they're bumping into each other to get through to the kid. Well, yeah, that's how I start. Yeah, yeah no, it's great. I, I really enjoy watching it. And again, I've seen Sam Walker smile about seven times in six years, and uh, he we were both doubled over with laughter in Niagara Falls watching you perform. Thank you. And not to mention and. and Look, we had great shows um, for us. The audience looked like they'd been in a firing squad. Hey, there was outbursts, yelling. You forget. It was all great until that fucking Saturday late show when it was all the young, drugged-out guys who had lost their money at the casino. Yeah. Everybody else, it was mostly middle-aged people. Did we get in, into it with some... Oh, was there some guys that just were heckling? Oh, that's right, on yeah. the side stage. Oh, okay, yeah, that was a different night, too. Even on one of the good nights, a drunk guy yelled out at Louie a couple times. And yeah. It's on my tape. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> and they finally fucking kicked him out, like, get out of yeah, here. No. Yeah. No, it was that... Look... Usually, any comedy club that's attached to a casino is up for... I'm, I'm banned from the Edmonton Casino that's attached to the comedy club, so I can't even stay in the hotel attached to the casino. Did it involve piss? They they found marijuana twigs in my desk and said that I was smoking weed in my room. Mm. What's an easy way to get you out of money? You should have thought of that. Fucking cunts. Fucking cunts. And now it's completely legal across the country. In fact, the government will mail it to you. It's dog shit. Always go black market, folks. Support the entrepreneur. Yeah, support capitalism. None of that fucking government-run shit. No, it's the worst. It's the worst. But you never... It's funny. You, you were straight-up alcoholic. You, you didn't have any uh, drug problems in la i was too afraid i i tried to kill myself when i was 16 and so i went to a like I got, yeah <laughs> didn't work unfortunately yeah. by the way it was it was benzos i didn't know it was ativan and i found it in my mom's medicine cabinet ah. and they were like are they, i was like are these sleeping pills and google's like yeah but it's like it's impossible to overdose on benzos so yeah it was i should have just taken three and had a nice night but uh, pill what do you fucking marilyn monroe like I, I was 16 and a white girl decided broke my heart what was i to what was i to do <laughs> yeah that's kind of goes with the territory if a white girl breaks your heart you do tend to go to pills beat her at her own game yeah and yeah. so they got an ekg i got heart condition and i was told in no, no uncertain you have terms, a heart condition yeah or you got one from the i have one uh it was born and i was told in no uncertain terms by a high high professional at the cleveland clinic Try to not drink so much, don't smoke so much, but if you try cocaine, you will die. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you don't need that fucking nitrous shot. Giddy up and then stroke out. Wouldn't be cool if you were all palsied out on one side. You'd probably mm. get more work. I'm drinking this and Louie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the Louie voice is better than your actual voice. He you, speaks perfect. Yeah, yeah, he speaks perfect, and you're stroked out. It's like a service animal. But that yeah, might fucking... be the edge that you need to get on America's Got Talent. You have auditioned? I, they, every year I talk with them. Yeah. For a, for a little while, almost every year I talk with them, and I get excited. Yeah. But then it's like you have to – it's not just about being clean or TV clean. You have to be family friendly. For sure. And I can't. Your, acts, your act eclipses anything nice about you. Yeah. <laughs> what little things – what little nice things there may be. Yeah, it's <laughs> – I can't – I how, could, how are you weathering this? Like – this is not... You didn't just get into this three weeks ago. You're coming up on 10 plus years now. Yeah. And uh, what, what, what was the, um, you know, the last five years like? Because clearly after the third, fourth, fifth year, you'd clearly be going, this is my bed and I've got to sleep in it. Oh, yeah. How am I going to 
overcome everything on top of being a blue act with a with a dummy. I mean, I can't say the I can't even go in terms of five years because two and a half there was just nothing. But yeah. at least the past year and a half has been great because I have the experience of starting at ten. And you get over the stage fright before I even did my first comedy open mic, so I knew how to do it. And it was like I was preparing for the year and a half I just had, which is going to New York and not rising. I'm not anywhere, but I'm quickly, like, I get way more gigs than people who've been doing it a couple years in New York who don't stand out and don't do anything. And that, that year in New York would have taken you 20 years in Los Angeles yeah. as far as traction goes. Oh, yeah. doing it's population density, in, you know. And yeah. venues and shit. But yeah, yeah, I mean, you can't do four. You know, no, you can do four spots a week in L.A., of course, but that takes you forever. And you have to be a star. Yeah. Because no one's going to have you on stage for four spots. Or it's a bringer. It, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's more uh, business than comedy in Los Angeles. That's what I couldn't understand. I'd see the lineups, and I'm like, this guy's bombed every time I've seen him. Yeah. He's on Friday at 10 p.m. But he's got a high Instagram follower account, so put him on. Yeah, even on top of that more recently, for sure. Yeah, it's not. A, it's a weird time. That's why I'm doing this. This is coming out. This is over 10 years now in various forms. And um, <coughs> oh, yeah, he had skin when you started. I did have skin. My son. Do you have shows coming up? I do. Uh, tomorrow, uh, I'm headlining. I'm doing, I think, at least 30 on a very dark show. It's great. Do you find sometimes that people are looking to do a dark show and then they end up uh, regretting because the other comics that they have on the show were friends of theirs that do a little goofy. Oh, we, we know enough people to put a little dark show together and then they bring a really dark comedian in. And then they don't have comedy at the. Uh... Yeah, well, no, not never one that got canceled afterwards. But there was one I did when I first moved out there. It was sort of up a little up toward uh, north of the city, and it was like triple X, you know, dirty, dirty show. Yeah. And it was mostly normal comedy. One guy tried to do a clitoral circumcision joke, mm. and it got a backlash. And he was like, "Oh, yeah." But then I went up. And I was being underestimated by two of the guys who didn't know me yet. I love that. Isn't that great? I, dude, I went in there. They're like, "Do you know what the light is?" And I'm like. Yeah, I know yeah. what the light. I know what the light is. The red one, uh, directly across from the stage. I wonder what that's for. Yeah, I told the the producer who knew me how much time I had, and in the the guy who was hosting heard it, and he was like, "Oh, well, not doing that." But then after I got up, I was the darkest. I did the best. I hit them the hardest. And then the guy who said, "Do you know what the light is?" is like, you probably should have headlined. You know, this is yeah, this is great. I don't understand how they someone can't. I think because so many people lie. And they'd say that they've been doing comedy for a length of time, but the actual hours on stage is... Minimal. Very minimal. And it's weird. For, they should have known that you doing comedy 10 years, that you'd clearly have a... You'd know where the light was. Well, they didn't know me. The guy who, the guy who said that was the host, and he just didn't yeah. know me. He didn't know me. And that's fair. Bad producer. Eh... He's a I don't know. I held them responsible. Now that you have Google and there should be no gray area, especially if you're producing a show, you shouldn't have detailed information about the uh, the um, performer to know how to put them in the lineups and their abilities. But then again, it's a puppet act. It, there's no good expectations for a puppet act. Even I, if Not I see a puppet. Me, I have the highest... I had high expectations when I'd seen you come into the Hooters and I saw that briefcase... And I looked and I go, please don't be instruments. Please don't eat be instruments. And then I had all the expectations. Just for a ventriloquism in general, I was like, this is, like I told you, I go, you guys come around once every 30 years. And uh, there's usually a few other ones around your generation. Yeah. But those guys are never going to see the light of day. Yeah, they you do know. fairs and, and yeah. church basements, and that's fine. In libraries, Carnival and that's fine. Cruises, yeah, I guess those are the. Those, I only, I like those guys though, because I know I do. there's a guy named Dan Horn who's a great ventriloquist, uh -huh. and he does cruise ships. But he's he's really funny, and he he's a good writer. Yeah, and he, those guys make a lot of money. <sighs> it's that I can't sneeze at. He would do raunchier if he could, but he he can do clean really well. Yeah, but yeah, like, it's the church basement stuff that I. That's a nightmare for me. Brian Regan, 
very clean comic. It sounds like that, like standing ovations. Yeah. Uh, zero, like Jim Gaffigan stuff like Selling that. out Kansas City. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, never been on television. No, it's wild. There's a whole, uh, you know, various tiers to this market. And you know, you've probably, like, you've had so much whipped cream here in Austin. And uh, I know there's a part of you, not only that from your experience, but where you live, you're not uh, fooled by the delusions of Austin, Texas. Yeah, it's a circus. Yeah, it's a great. Listen, it's great. I'm glad Rogan and the other guys are yeah. here. Kill Tony. I like this, but I would have liked that if it was anywhere. Yeah, it's not Austin. It's yeah. like there's. It's weird to watch. It's like I was at the Kill Tony sign up, and like we're outside. <laughs> explain, explain. Okay, so because it's terrifying. Yeah, three hundred comedians signing up in a bucket uh, for this open mic. It's a fucking massive line. And then you hang out at this bar. 200 people. Yeah. 300 people. And they changed the bar. So it's now no longer just this big room, which was kind of, the first time I signed up was, you know, that's what it was. But now it's this club where there's music blaring and they have to turn it off to Uh, call it and half the people are outside. Yeah. And it's this thing that's like, they come, they come from the mothership. This is the bar. This is the mothership. They come from the mothership and you see them and all the comics start clapping like, oh, they're going to call some. And then the guys run up and they say, blah, 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 you're on Kill Town. And then they they're go. They run across the street? Yeah. Because oh, they're not in Shakespeare's anymore. Yeah, They yeah. got kicked out. And then, so, yeah. And then when the person gets brought up, like, everybody's like, you can do it. It's like this creep. It's a really creepy thing that happens. I don't know. It just seems those were all people that were in a uh, school that had like part of the chess club, and they were. It was like go team, go team, and yeah. then you're theater kids, yeah. weird theater kids that liked anime. And now you got mentally deranged drug addicts. So like, there's everybody waiting is insane. And in and, and fucking me and Greg Giraldo Jr. and two wonderful comic, the actual Greg Giraldo's Jr. And he, we were waiting outside. We knew we weren't going to get it. It was like more than halfway through. We're like, eh, it's going to... Is just... he an East Coast guy too? Oh, yeah, yeah. He yeah. started... He started. So he's, he knows what's up. Yeah, like two or three years ago, he's young. He's great. And uh, one of the comics got into a fight at the bar across the street, so he got arrested. <laughs> and we were all watching it. And all, <laughs> and all these comics, they're, they're looking, and they're starting to yell like, hey, free hey let him go and they had their phones out oh, and everything yeah, yeah. and me and Greg are like what the fuck's like what is yeah. happening here what are you TMZ yeah losers and it's all of course everybody's stories today hey look at that but it's, yeah but Everyone I don't smells like piss yeah they've been living in their cars for months but I want to get back to the point of like not fooled by yeah promises of glitz and glamour yeah yeah you must find there's some you must find some um some peace in that Oh yeah, yeah. It's not the it's not the beginning and it's not the end. It's the hot thing right now, yeah. and that's awesome. Yeah. And I'm glad that it's here. Mm. But it's yeah. like anything else. It'll it will it'll pass. Something new that's just like it will rip the idea and hop, pop up somewhere in Arizona. And you know, <laughs> probably <clears throat> just through the experience of living in Los Angeles, it happens more rapidly. The hot and not thing is second to second. All of a sudden, all the attention's over here, and then in the same breath, that everything tends to move around like a storm. Yeah, and it's not a good way to build a career. I mean, I wouldn't no. know because I'm dog shit. But it's, it's, it's a great. If you, I listen. I'm gonna. Of course, when I come here, I'm gonna sign up, and I'm gonna pray to the Christ that I don't believe yeah. in that I that I get to go on. Yeah. But it's not wholly necessary because there's a backlash to it too let's say you're three years in you got 15 good minutes you do amazing on kill tony now you have nothing to back it up yeah and now you're beholden to a brand that's going to use you how they want yeah instead of baking in a smaller market for a while and making a shit ton of money in a vfw hall like four four weekends out of the fucking month yeah aged whiskey that's what you want to be. Age whiskey. When do you smoke one of those Luckies or? Oh, Winston's. Yeah. Winston's. You were ecstatic. I've never seen you smile so much that you found out how cheap they were here. $5 a pack. In New York, it's $17 a pack for cigarettes. Minimum. Doesn't matter what brand it is. $17? $17. And they're $5 here? Yeah. I love the South, man. It's great. The only thing that kind of shocked me is you know that uh, Texas has put a ban on uh, some YouTube uh, pornography. Yeah, 
I don't agree with that, but I get it. It's doing porn is really bad for especially my generation. We're I'm a generation that grew up having instant sexual gratification from any wild thing you yes. can see, and a lot of things on accident. A lot of things we found on accident. It became our thing, and we didn't want it to be. And I, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I think there's a a lot of people who've developed deviant sexual behavior because the thing that they were exposed to triggered something and put them down that path. Yeah. That's absolutely. And that happened that happened to me at like 14. And yeah. it took I had to shake it off. I had to quit it, but yeah. and it should be a parent's job to make sure their kids aren't having internet access unrestricted, but parents in this country suck, so. Wouldn't it would be cool if you could go on unemployment insurance as a young man because you had a, overactive boners? <laughs> And you go, I can't even, like, it'd be a little, a week off of, of just jacking off for 10 days in a row. And you come back to work and you can focus a little more, but you just can't get rid of that kickstand that's in the front of your pants. Yeah, but it was fun trying, wasn't it? <laughs> wasn't it? It was fun. It was fun. I remember. My I, eyes dried up one day. When I first came, I remember, because I was just, ju- I was doing the motions for uh, like two months. I had got a cell phone and I was watching, they used to put like the f- beginning dialogue parts of porn clips on youtube Mm, yeah and i would watch those and that was porn for me it was always the female teacher with the male student and the male student was like 35 years old and i would watch it was always the build-up and it was as as soon as they're about to get into it it would cut off and for two months i was dry jerking off to that because i didn't know what coming was (laughs) i pre-come and it was like oh that's it that must be what it is yeah and then i was just doing that one night just zoned out see pornography like video porn. No, you had never come across it. No, it was just I had never seen the actual fucking yet. It was yeah. just the fo- the Wild. introductions, and then I just was doing it and it just blah. And I was like, all right, this is great. I made a schedule: Tuesday and Thursday after school. Boom, I would do it. And then I realized, oh, I can do this every day. What's the setting look like? Uh, the finished basement that I had in my house. Yeah. With the big fl- floodlights over, it, really like bright. Fight club. Yeah, smelling the carpet. <laughs> this fucking flip phone with a three JPEG fucking <laughs> video of some whore in a fucking yeah. outfit. And I remember the magic day of, I can do this every 30 minutes. Yeah. And I did. No, it would be crazy if you put that kind of energy into your career. I know. Anything. Right? It was boundless. You could power a small village of just 10... 20 year old guys jacking off even up to even up to a couple months ago i was edging for like seven hours just not yeah. sleeping just just in and like what the yeah because you're self uh abuser oh yeah <laughs> in every possible do you think form. if you were to get involved in a professional relationship with a, a professional dominatrix the whole schoolroom, <sighs> it's, it's and there's no intercourse she just goes through the drill you're being punished. There's some. She does smack you in the face for not bringing your homework. Yeah, that's the time. thing, though. I, it's not. There's nothing physical. It's all psychological, and that's okay. a weird. I yeah. don't need any flesh and blood person you don't to need fulfill any touching. that. See, I'm a toucher. Oh yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah, so I've noticed. Yeah, I, I wasn't you, asleep. <laughs> no, that's how you got all those hickeys on the back of your neck. <laughs> yeah, I told you that you fell on a tennis ball. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but yeah, I couldn't. That's I can't slide down to that 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 road of. Humili- you don't want to be humiliated by a, a very attractive. Of course I, Of course I do. But I can't because it'll. I will destroy. If alcohol didn't destroy my life, paying oh, paying women to yeah. humiliate me, it's gonna. Jesus, good I'd for you. Pay pig. I would. I, I'm not into it, but I swear to Christ, if I would do pay that. Pay pig. You never heard of the pay pigs? Literally a whole fetish. It, it's called financial domination. It's oh, no. usually over Twitter and like OnlyFans. The whole thing is that a beautiful woman's. It's like you better put a thousand dollars to my account right now, you little fuck, and then just does it, and yeah. that's it. I can see getting into that in three years if I started doing dominatrixes now. Doing three jobs, you go to see her twice a week, and then she charges you for all the phone calls on top of everything. Yeah. I can't. Look at your hands. You're freaking out right it's, now. I got, bring Pokemon her in. I got bring her in. <laughs> I got Pokemon games to buy, man. I can't fucking. Oh, you're on that. That's probably a little uh, oh, socially acceptable to collect trading cards. Oh, no, no, the games. But I don't know one from the other. Now, I'm afraid to go open this Pandora's box. Now, I don't know about Pokemon. So... No, no, it's the fact of there's so many different versions of these characters in from playing cards to video games to 
the show, yeah, and all of that stuff. So I'm the I'm into the game. I'm into the video game. The video game. Yeah, I sold off all my cards to drink. No, yeah, that's what happens wholesale. And one of them, I think a couple of them, I got seventy dollars wholesale. Yeah, if I had them, and they were good condition. If I had them graded and like sold, it would have been. How was that different from the game that was getting people shot in the hood? Oh well, because Pokemon Go is yeah. a shitty homogenized cell phone game and so you know is that forever is there an end to that no it's forever it's forever you just okay. rack up points and pokemon yeah. and you and trade them there's still a huge community that does yeah. it but yeah it's that that came and went but that was i think that was the last good memory america had was pokemon go the summer of pokemon go we were all yeah. outside and that was during covid too wasn't it no it was way before it was like the, my last year of high school oh, okay the 2015 wow because 2016 is where Tumblr started to leak out into the world, and you know what I mean by that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all the political stuff. Before they ruined all the fun. WikiLeaks uh, documents and various bloggers. That's where people started to meet, I think. Yeah. The intellectuals, to a certain degree. And the commies. Yeah. Is that, is that where... Where do you find all the worst information? Reddit. Reddit? Reddit has the worst information. It's the wor Reddit is the worst website in the history of the world. Way worse than Facebook. Facebook is just an echo chamber for boomers who don't know about a lot anymore. Mm. But Reddit is this awful fucking... It's like Craigslist for psychos, right? Not even Craig. It's a self... The, all these little... The subreddits, all these little communities, they just feed themselves all this regurgitated stuff. Everybody on Reddit talks the same. It's all the same inside jokes and like snarky ways of coming back to somebody in an argument. And it, you know, it's like... The most act like our communism and then fucking Star Wars, just all the most pathetic pot bellied yeah. alopecia fucking spaghetti sauce in the beard thirty year old men who collect <laughs> Star Wars figures. Yeah. That's what Reddit is. And it's e the worst of every kind of them. Truck stop, gas station, graffiti in the bathroom. You'd wish that they had the balls to do really? that. Really? No, these these guys haven't left their, their fucking hometown. Yeah. But isn't it aren't you look how do you distance yourself? There's clearly it's riddled with trolls, very articulate, smart characters who decided to take on the role of a shit disturber. How do they keep from losing their day job at the gas station? Uh, well, the good ones know how to you know hide their tracks well because there's no censorship. No, there is. Oh no, there's a good amount. So you can write racial slurs or hate hate crime or oh no 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 yeah, you'll murder, get banned for that. Blood. No, okay. Each community has their own rules. Yeah, but the overall the community the whole thing yeah it, like they'll ban hate subreddits like there's one there was one called fat people hate yeah where they posted pictures of fat people in the comments like look at this fucking pig yeah it, it was fun I was on there you could say fucking pig on Reddit oh yeah oh because you I can can't, swear at least. I can't write the word pig on Facebook. They take it, took it away from me. Jesus. I was warned. Pig. Uh, it was, I think it was under hate crime. Well, you probably should have been commenting under a Down Syndrome child's photo. No, the problem was is every single comment on, regardless of what the circumstances were, I would follow it up with a hard P-I-G. <laughs> and They uh, thought you were spamming. They reported me as, uh, I guess, a nuisance. But that's where uh, Mrs. Shipwhiskers is going strong. She is. She's been my. I want to know about her. <laughs> What's her life like? What's her name? <laughs> I tell everybody that my daughter just got out of prison. She plays racquetball at a chocolate factory. <laughs> it's the glasses, really. Um, it's the stringy hair too. She well, looks like a girl in a shit. It's gonna be. Um, it's gonna be a t-shirt. I'm gonna do a, a t-shirt with that, uh, Mrs. Shit Whiskers. That was just on a angry Google search one day where I was looking for a shit-eating grin, and that came up. And I stared at it and stared at it and couldn't understand what what series of events in this person's life has brought them to <laughs> smiling the shit on their in their teeth. She looks the part though. She yeah. has got stringy hair. Redhead with freckles with shit in her teeth. She probably wears like dresses with like flower patterns and shit and she's probably been murdered by now. You I can smell know. her armpits when you're sitting across the table from her. BO with shit in your teeth? Yeah. Those go together. <coughs> like no a... pretty girls into shit. <laughs> no. No pretty girls into shit. Oh, for sure there is. You tell me the two girls one cup were those girls were hot. Those were slaves. They were having a good time there. 
I don't know. You look at those you eyes. You leave them alone. <laughs> Their eyes are... So- no. You saw a tear. I don't think you knew how to read these ladies the way they should be read with which... That changed the world. Are you telling me it didn't change the world? It did change the world. Everybody knows that song. Everybody Boo-dee. knows that song. Yeah. 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 And uh, the, the debate whether or not it's ice cream or not. Um, it's not ice cream. Really? That's some soft syrup. There's a thing that they no, take. I There's a drug it. that they take yeah. where it makes it fluffy and like Stool- soft. Oh. Like, so it, it de-shits it a little bit? Yeah, it doesn't make it nuggets. It makes it like a coil. It'll make it like a nice tight coil. Oh. Once if you get under the hole and you just see pinworms dropping down into your mouth. I mean, it's Brazil. Do you say anything? Is that the equivalent to like a venereal wart? To scat people is having pinworms in your stool. That's like crabs. It's like, why didn't you tell me? It's yeah. not a big deal, but it's yeah. like, all right, he's, he's rapscallion. <laughs> you got me. You got oh, me. Peter Pinworms over here. You got me. <laughs> yeah, I know um, uh, Boomers had uh, pinworms for like six years. Wow, really? Yeah. I'm very surprised that Boomer has pinworms. <laughs> Boomer has pinworms. Boomer. So when he, in that video, when he farted in that girl's face, he probably launched on. He launched a couple of them in there. Oh, that was pre worms. Oh, good. That was early in his career. He got worms maybe about eight years ago, and uh, he says it, his asshole itches so bad because they come out and breathe at night that he has to twist his boxers and stuff them deep into his rectum so there's nobody out having a party while he's sleeping okay so he yeah he lives in botswana right no no, he lives in toronto oh okay it's almost like you go to a doctor it's almost like they have pills for that (laughs) i know i told them i go this is a simple prescription over the counter situation and you can have this dealt with and he says there is little guys his kids don't ever introduce me to him i'm happy with the blanket he started washing his hands oh good yeah Good yeah. boomer. You'll meet him. You'll meet him in September. Uh, speaking of September, I um, I'm going to be doing some shows uh, across Canada starting April. Oh, uh, I'm at Creek in the Cave this Saturday, March 23rd, for the Filthy Show, and then I'm in uh, Surrey, Yuck Yucks, and Calgary, Edmonton, Winnipeg. Kenora, all these small towns, Thunder Bay, Toronto, Hamilton, and all that jazz. Um, what else is happening? It'll be a European tour, it looks like, uh, in October, and uh, more Canadian dates in uh, in the fall. But um, where can people find you? Instagram, Jake Louie Comedy. Yeah. Uh, Twitter, Jake and Louie, and Jake and Louie on Facebook. And when can people see you uh, back in Austin? Uh, we have to figure that out because I have Kentucky in July, and then I have when in September we got our stuff, so it'll have to be around there. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe late August here. Yeah, I can see August. Yeah, late that'll August. be great. It's gonna be hot. It's gonna be hot. You put your name in the hat. And they're gonna pull you on your next trip. I feel it. And then I was kind of hoping that was going to be the situation because this podcast would have been a little different. We could have focused on uh, the lottery aspect. Of yeah, it. But, I flopped uh, this week, folks. I didn't know South by Southwest was going to shut everything no, down. No, was I take full responsibility of that. A, a feeling that people would want a um, uh, you to perform being outside of the circuit and your reputation from your last visit, but you did have a. You had some nods and... Um, yeah, Mothership. That yeah. was good, yeah. You know, you performed at the Mothership on Sunday. I was told uh, you killed. Yeah, it was good. Um, which is very cool. And we'll see what happens. It's going to be an exciting year for comedy this year. We're going to see who's going to get canceled, who's not going to get canceled. Who's uh, going to die. You can't cancel me. I quit. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to jasonrouse.com for all those dates. And um, there's a bunch of stuff coming out. I got two specials coming out this year. And I'm going to go shoot another movie in Wisconsin, which I've never been to. Um, I'm looking forward to the cheese. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Boom. Beautiful. Cool. Alcohol and pinworms. <laughs> yeah, we covered Thank you, That should be the name of the episode. Uncle, we cover the spectrum on that.
like to be 